Okay, right, so now it's my turn to, to, to talk. Um, so, as I said at the beginning, first aiders, is, they're really important. It's not just... Uh, first aid training is great because, you know, it's a life skill. It's good because at work, you know, there are, it means we've got people to call on when those accidents and those near misses and those incidents happen. Um, but also outside of work as well. So this is a really short little video that ooh, might even work on here, which didn't work at White Night, um, which just talks about kind of not knowing can be really kind of not knowing first aid can be uh, can, can really cause problems. Um, it's not too horrific. There's no blood. Australia, so um, again, pools in the backyard doesn't really happen around here. So, um, but it's that thing of you know, if she knew how to help, she wouldn't have had that barrier between her and her son. Um, and I think you know that's that's a really key message that we all need to have a little bit of understanding of first aid. So as well as kind of becoming a first aider, I'm going to bring a Burns kit. Have you got a Burns kit in your? So there are other tools. So there's a great tool. If you go onto the St John's Ambulance website in the, in the UK, uh, there's, a, there's an app. So say somebody hits their head and has drowned and you've pulled them out, you can put that into the app and it can tell you the basics of how to try and help them. So it's not detailed and I'm sure at most points it will say call an ambulance. Um, but it can give you a little bit of information to help you along the way. The other thing that we've done in all of the kitchens and all the areas uh, in, at White Nights and in the kitchen here at, uh, uh, at Greenlands, we've put in a burns kit. It's only a simple little thing, and we're not saying that if someone does what that chef did earlier and puts their hand in the fryer that you want to put, you want to start getting a little bit of burn gel out, because it's not really going to make a lot of difference. But if someone has had a bit of oil on their hand or has caught themselves getting a tray out of the oven, they're great to just, it's just an a aloe vera gel that will just re relieve that, that burn. So please, please make yourself aware of where they're kept and use them um, as you need to. Even if you do use them, it still needs to be reported. Because if it's something like, oh, every time we get that tray out of that oven, I catch my elbow or my arm or my wrist on a shelf, then there could be, if that happens all the time, we might need to do something to make that work better, make it work uh, safer. Okay. Um, so this is about protecting you and others. Um, <coughs> and I just wanted to go through the process because quite often or not, it may feel like the process is done by managers, your supervisors, and you don't really get involved. Well, this stuff is important to everybody. Um, and everybody should be involved. So risk assessment. So what is a risk assessment? It's about assessing uh, what do we do that could harm us. So we do a risk assessment for a location. So in, in the kitchen, we do a risk assessment for the kitchen. We look at anything that could harm us. Okay. Um, we identify who could be harmed. So if it's using the deep fat fryer, it's the chefs or anyone that uses them, or anyone that cleans them, they could be harmed. How likely is it, some, is it that 
somebody's behind. If it's not very likely, not in the example of a, a fryer, but if it's not, if it's kind of, you know, just moving around the kitchen, we've got a non-slip floor service, everybody's got their safety shoes on, it's all good, then that's fine. That's as far as it needs to go. It just needs to be on a risk assessment. Um, and we've reduced the harm because we've got a slip resistant floor, we've got safety shoes, we've got um, all of that stuff. But with a, something like a fryer, you may look at that and go, well actually, is that enough? Have we reduced the risk enough by having safety shoes and by having a non-slip floor that somebody's not going to slip and put their hand in the fryer? Well, we might need something else. So in, in those cases, we then uh, go forward. So this is what an example of a risk assessment for an area. So you can't really read it, but it just identifies things like slips and trips, um, you know, how we reduce that. Well, we mop up spillages straight away. We wear safety shoes. We've got a non-slip floor. Um, that's the risk pretty much reduced. But with something like a big fat fryer or a meat slice is a good one, um, that's got a little bit more risk to it. That's not just, oh well, uh, it's okay because the people that, um, that are working in the kitchen, they know how to work that bit of kit, that's fine. But do they know how to do it safely? So what we need to do is identify that task. So uh, cleaning a deep fat fryer is a really good example. Who carries out that task? Is it a kitchen porter? Is it a chef? Who does that? How do they do it safely? So this is where we write the steps, almost like, you know, with, with your health and safety champion, with your line manager in the kitchen going, right, how do we do this safely? How do we carry bits of kit up and down the stairs when we're doing housekeeping? Or how do we um, make sure we're not um, driving around campus unsafely? So how do we do it safely? Then we come up with the, those lists of, of kind of steps almost. And then following that, once we have that, once we've agreed that, so this is cleaning a deep fat fryer. This is, so it has to be specific. In, it's a bit different here at, at Greenlands, not so many locations, but at White Nights we probably have about 10 or 12 different locations or with fryers. But each of them are different because of where they're positioned, because of how big they are, because of how they're cleaned, how often they're used. So we need to do one for each area that just says, you know, switch off the fryer, switch off the power at the wall, that's very important. Um, make sure you've got all of the uh, things that you need to clean it, make sure you've got the right equipment, um, PPE on, make sure the oil is cold, is cool before you, before you start to take it out of the fryer. So all of those things, but it has to be relevant to where you're working. It has to be relevant to the task you're doing. If it isn't, it's a lovely bit of paper that we have in a folder that nobody uses. What we are going to do is uh, we've got a sticker that's going to go on every bit of kit that we deem uh, through the risk assessment as a bit of a dangerous piece of equipment and that has a, risk, uh, has a safe system of work. So you as somebody going in the kitchen, especially if you've got a casual, you know, or an agency chef, they go up to a fryer and they go, oh, I'll know how to use a fryer. Well, actually, no, you've got to at least read this and go through this with us. Do you know how to do it? You know, we're trying to protect everyone in those areas. There's lots of ways of being trained. So this lovely picture from the 1970s is about on-the-job training, so those safe systems of work, being trained, being gone through as a group or individually with uh, the head chef or with the uh, line manager or the health and safety champion, to understand that you know how to do the tasks that you've got to do for your job. Um, flow training, which is where we do all of our online food safety, health and safety training. Um, we need to make sure that we're up to date with that. Um, all of you will know that on your self-service through the university, there's lots of courses. There's a lot of courses that aren't very relevant, but things like first aid training, manual handling training are all available there for you to sign up. And the last
last one, the Tuco Academy. So Tuco has a an academy now which does kind of quite quite interesting courses um, and practical courses where there's kind of study tours and trips to restaurants and kitchens and working in kitchens. But they also do um, some really good uh, safety sort of training. So one that we're going to run at, uh, at White Nights in a couple of months is a level three managing allergens because allergens is a really big issue we need to be doing it correctly um, and how do we manage that so we're running that course through the Tuco Academy but there's plenty of other courses so they do come out quite regularly they're in the magazine if you want to know more about them I'm sure Derek and um, Paul could tell you more about that had a visitors questionnaire for I don't know how many of you know we I think we talked about it in the road shows but we have a central kitchen at um, the White Nights campus where we produce a lot of food so we've always had a visitors questionnaire for anyone attending the central kitchen but through the audit that Derek um, spoke about earlier um, it was recognised that we need one to be confident of who's coming into every location so what we've done is we've come up with this uh, visitors questionnaire it takes personal details of the person coming to your unit it asks what they're doing are they coming is it an EHO coming to do an inspection of the kitchen is it someone coming to uh, repair something in one of the bedrooms whoever it is whether they work for the university or not if they're not part of our department they need to fill this in because then we know who's working in our area and um, of are they doing things like hot works are they are they working at height are they trained to do that they need to confirm that they're trained to do that work it then has um, a little bit about and this is what we have in, the, in this has come from the central kitchen this is about have they had any symptoms you know there's been a lot of over the last three four months a lot of norovirus around we don't want people coming to work in in our kitchen areas who Jiffy tummy, and you know, could infect the staff, could then infect our customers. We don't want that. So there's just a little bit of, you know, have you had any symptoms? You know, have you got any of these things? If they have, they can't come in. And then to finish it off, we as a team confirm that we're happy for them to carry on. If we're not, then we call our line manager. And then if we've given them any PPE, if we've given them any kind of shoe covers or a jacket or whatever we require then we need to make sure we get that back because some of the stuff that you know goes out the door says oh yes that's okay from that coat that you had that white yeah. coat so we need to make sure everything and they've cleared their area as well so we need to check if someone's been had a cooker apart and they could have put all sorts of stuff all over the floor we need to make sure that the area is clear and safe Okay, so um, it, it <laughs> 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 fantastic. Right. Okay. So PPE. Okay. Protective uh, personal protective equipment. Now. Um, Derek here is about to go and clean the fryer. Do you think he's a little bit overdressed? Yes. Yeah. He's a, we, I don't know about the hard hat. I don't think we need a hard hat. And the respirator, may, maybe not. Yeah. Fine. We have at your disposal, at your disposal, lots of different types of PPE. Everything from a hard hat um, for any of you going on to the building site where the where the, the new rooms are. Uh, this is from the old days when we were a bit of a building site. To your, your boots or your shoes that you wear that are non-slip uh, in the kitchen. Um, but it has to be relevant. There's, when we do those safe systems of work, we go through and we go, right, to clean a fryer, yes, you'll need gloves. Um, you, you 
may need uh, some sort of eye protection. I think a respirator is probably a little bit too far, but it's knowing what you should be using. So know, understand those safe systems of work. If you're not sure, when you come to do it, they will be available in your areas and you can have a look at them and check before you start that task. To finish, there are. Uh, this is a the ten rules of health and safety. We've had these uh, put into a poster, which uh, we'll get Derek and uh, Paul to put up around around Greenwood as well. So everybody is responsible for their own safety and the safety of others. Okay, just because that door that's hanging off its hinges isn't going to affect you, doesn't mean that we should walk past it. And at all accidents are preventable. So by recording and uh, reporting near misses and incidents where nobody's got harmed but they could have done, we can prevent all accidents. Following company rules, regulations and procedures, those safe systems of work on how to do things, um, knowing tasks that you are trained to do and tasks that you're not trained to do that you shouldn't be doing is really important. The next one is, um, is quite a good one, the assessing the risk. I used to work for a petrol company and they had a big thing about that taking, you know, seconds. It doesn't take long to just think about what you're going to do. You know, we work in environments where we're in a rush a lot of the time. We're working quite fast. But actually stopping and thinking about what you're going to do, you know, okay, it's easy, I can carry that up the stairs might hurt but it'll be fine but if you did that every day you know that repetitive strain that that carrying things up and down the stairs could have stop and think about it is there a safer way to do it is there a less stressful way to do it be proactive about safety you know look don't hunt things out but if you see something look you know report it do something about it if you're not trained don't do it you know, if uh, you work in the housekeeping team and one of the chefs quietly says, come clean our fryer for us, you're not trained. If, you know, if you're trained and they say, come and do our fryer for us, great. But if you're not trained, don't do it. Manual handling, manage the lift. That's where this stop and think thing really comes into its own with manual handling. You know, yes, I could probably carry that. Should I? Should I carry it? Should I be twisting as I carry it? Do I need to go and find someone else to help me carry it? Those are the things we need to think about before um, we lift and we do any manual <coughs> handling. Don't take shortcuts. Putting in a wren and getting a man to come and fix something or remove something from the ceiling, you might think, oh, I'll just do it myself. But actually, to reduce that risk, those people have the equipment, have the training to do to do those tasks. Don't take shortcuts. Practice good housekeeping. This is about keeping areas tidy. You know, we reduce the risk of having to report near misses if there's not stuff in corridors or on the floor or, you know, things that are, are cluttered. And always be prepared. Um, prepared to kind of see something, prepared to report it, prepared to do something about it. Right, another quiz time. So, there will be another code, I'm sure. the pin for the next game.